How's it going, everybody? I'm Brett Medlock, here today with John from the Nintendo Enthusiast website, and he has been playing Shin Megami Tensei Five, a game that a lot of people have been looking forward to. You lucky son of a gun. Right off the bat, what do you think about the game so far? Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so much I want to talk about, but, like, I don't want to spoil things for people, but, like, it... Yeah, no spoilers, but spill it. It feels like they used the third game, which just had its HD remaster. It feels like they took that foundation... And they sprinkled on all of the really good, like, quality of life and combat additions from the most recent games on 3DS. And they just threw it in a blender and added some exploration elements. Mm. And, like, almost has to be the best in the series. Okay, that's that's bold. That's a bold thing to say. Yeah. Now, admittedly, this will be my first game in the series, so I'm actually really looking forward to it. I always thought it looked awesome, and I figured, hell, I'll just wait for this one. And I'm glad I waited, because since you just said that, wow, I mean, the best game in the series. That's crazy. Totally. So first off... Let's talk about the story, which you, I, I mean, you've already told me it's not really, there's, there's not much there, but like, what do you think about it overall so far? So yeah, again, like the, the third game was pretty low on story and the fourth one started adding more in and five is like, nah, mm -hmm. well, you'll get a story when I say you can have a story. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's there and like. It definitely takes a while to get going, but once it gets going, like it is actually pretty engaging. Like I, I have I I have ideas of where it's gonna go, but like I'm not positive. Like it's it's set up a fun mystery. Like it definitely feels like the old games, but it's doing something a little new. Again, no spoilers, but like I'm happy with where it's going, even though uh it's it's a little bare, but the mystery is keeping me going. Now, speaking of story and stuff, how's the characters and the voice acting, all that stuff? Did, did anything stick out to you? Any characters in particular? The human characters kind of seem like, not like stock characters, but like the kind of characters you expect in these sorts of games. Like you have like the mysterious smart guy, you, you have like your nerd dude, you have like your pretty girls who are like innocent and secretly important, that sort of stuff. And like, you know, the, the voice acting's pretty good. Like I, I don't have a, like, I'm, I don't have any rave reviews to give out but it all serves its purpose and yeah like it's good that i should have just said that it's good, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> okay now let's move on to the combat which i'm assuming you really love or else you wouldn't say it's the best game in the series so what do you yeah. think of it uh, the combat system's awesome. So it basically just picks up the baton from uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse on uh, 3DS which is uh, the most recent title aside from the remaster. So it's classic franchise stuff. So you're you're recruiting demons in your party yeah. that normally would try to kill you, but you can negotiate with them by giving them like money or giving them some of your HP or your MP and you get them to join your team. And then it's kind of a little bit like Pokemon, like each each creature is especially powerful with some attacks or they're also weak to some attacks. And so anyone who loves Pokemon would probably be really into this, but it's also really challenging. <laughs> so, well, I would say save constantly because you can always die. That's the main rule of these Shin Megami Tensei games. You can always die. Is there is there like no checkpoints? Well, here's the thing. Um, there's save points and it's actually really easy to get back to those save points whenever you need to. So there's even less excuse not to be saving constantly. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... But that being said, the regular fights, like, they're manageable as long as you, like, approach it with a level head and you don't get careless. Uh, the boss fights are another story. Boss fights feel like brick walls. So, in, in a good way, though. Like, it's not like you're bashing your head against the wall. It's, it's very clearly, okay, the designers came up with this really specific challenge. Like, this boss is going to use these sorts of attacks, and they're super powerful. But if you come to a party that's equipped to, you know, withstand these specific attacks while, like, I don't know, like, increasing attack power or decreasing his defense or whatever, like, then you can succeed. So like the boss fights are really hard, but it's kind of in like a like a really carefully crafted puzzle sort of way. It's it's really awesome. That's really cool. And we had talked previously how there is a bunch of different difficulty options. So if you do get stuck on that boss, you can just turn it down and then I guess just beat him a lot easier or is it like still pretty challenging? Have you have you messed with the difficulty at all? I, I actually haven't yet. It's funny that I can't actually Jeez. access hard mode at this point because it's like kind of like an Iron Man sort of deal. Like if you pick hard mode, then you're in hard mode. And if you ever drop the difficulty from hard mode, then like you can't go back to hard mode again. Oh, okay. <laughs> you either do it the whole way through or like like 
That's it, bro. You had your shot. Uh, so with normal, if you if you switch it down to easy for a boss fight, you beat him, you can turn it back up to normal. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't actually experimented with easy because I've I've been trying to like get a full like normal experience, but I know in in the three remaster, dropping it to easy made things like way easier. Oh. And I I yeah. So I I really think people are going to be okay. And plus, there's going to be day one DLC free that adds a safety mode that makes it like I think kind of like a baby mode. Nice. So you will be able to play this game if you just want to enjoy the non-story. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well put. Previously, you had mentioned the exploration, which I think you also mentioned that it's a lot more prominent in this game compared to the older ones. So how is the exploration? Like, how does it work? Yeah, so the exploration is, like, really the big breath of fresh air for this game, and I think it's what makes this game, like, so really strong. So in in the old games, like, a lot of the dungeons kind of felt like modular mazes, like, really angular, like... It really kind of getting back to that old school dungeon crawler feel and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're into but like personally for me like sometimes it could get a little monotonous like especially in three i thought four was getting a little better about that but in this game like those modular mazes like so far like they they just don't exist anymore that's great yeah it's all about this big new world called Da'at, I think it's pronounced, and can't talk about what it actually is, but it's it's not an open world, but it is definitely a big open space, and it it introduces a lot of vertical exploration to the series for the first time. Oh, cool. Yeah, so you're not just, like, walking across, like, a bunch of flat plains. Like, you're going to be spending a lot of time, like, climbing up, like, these big sand dunes or, like, going inside of, like, broken buildings that are also knocked over. So, like, you're climbing buildings. Nice. Yeah. I didn't picture any of this, to be honest. That's actually really cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's just one of those things that you, you experience, and then it's, like, a big pleasant surprise. Atlas added, like, a lot of great incentives to want to explore, which is awesome because it's already fun to explore for its own sake. But on top of that, there's like there's like items to find. There's uh, like special currencies you can find that like give you uh, basically unlock more powers. And there's 200 of these dudes called like Mimin, M-I-M-A-N. They're like <laughs> these cute little red dudes with weird shaped heads, and they're everywhere. And it's really fun just trying to like search every nook and cranny for them. And every time you find them, they give you more of that same currency that gives you more powerful. Oh, so there's okay. this terrific feedback loop to just keep you to keep exploring to get more powerful. That's really awesome. I feel like a lot of games mm-hmm. lack that, like to actually give you the want to explore. It's usually just move on to the next thing. But that's really cool that like you're actually wanting to explore for once. Right. Exactly. Like I think. And this is this is just like my personal opinion. I think even in a game like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, like it's really big and it's pretty, but like I I there wasn't always a clear incentive for why you're going around looking at everything. Yeah. But in this game with with the 200 meme in and like all the other little secrets to find, like like there's always a justification to like just keep going to like check one more alcove. Like I really think this is like exploration done right, even though it's not even open world. But sometimes it kind of feels like that. Yeah, that's really awesome. I was I was like really impressed from the trailers, so like a lot of the open sections that they showed. That's not really what I expected. So I'm excited to play this game for myself. But one final topic you wanted to go over was the presentation, like the load times and the menus. So have at it. Yeah, like it's it's kind of a mundane topic, but it's actually worth describing because it works so well, is that the the load times in this game are terrific. If you're moving between like two like completely different segments of the game world, then yeah, you're you're gonna sit through a load time like, I don't know, ten to fifteen seconds. But the truth is, you're not actually doing that very often. And with all the different save points, every save point is connected to every other save point, uh, for teleporting. Nice. And if if you're uh, teleporting between two different areas of part of the same world, and the the world sections are like really really large, if if you teleport, it's instantaneous. Oh wow! You would think you know this is still a Switch game. We're not talking PS5. Like you, I'm I'm willing to accept like a six second load time, but no, it's instantaneous. You are back in the action immediately, and the same is true with like boss fights or and fights in general. And, like, basically anything you do, it is smooth transitions, which is really awesome. Yeah, that's really impressive, especially because the ga- it's it's a pretty game. It's it's not like it's, like, this bare, ugly-looking game. It has, like, detailed environments and awesome-looking character models. Right, yeah, yeah. The character models look really nice. The world design in general is... Uh, 
it's nice yeah it's 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 creative like it's it's not sterile it really feels like dynamic and like oh yeah this is what the apocalypse would look like <laughs> Oh well, yeah, that's awesome. Was there any other main topics you wanted to go over? So the game throws like so much information at you and you'd think that would be overwhelming, but the the menu design is like pretty much up to the task. Like it's not 100% perfect, but of all the information there is to find, like it gives you multiple different ways to access it at any given moment. And once you're used to it, like you really feel like you're on top of like the many different variables that the game's shoving at you like whether it's like oh how many characters have fire skills on my team or who can i fuse with these two characters like it's it's presented really well that's really awesome well thanks a lot for coming on dude i'm super excited for this and is it your game of the year so far it might be i gotta <laughs> think about it some more i you know i got i gotta finish playing it first exactly exactly <laughs> but yeah i'm i'm really happy that it seems like it's great it comes out November 12th exclusively on Nintendo Switch. I think everyone's excited for it who loves JRPGs. I definitely am. It'll be my very first one in the series. I cannot wait. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for coming on, John. Goodbye. Thank you. Say bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'll add that in. <laughs> oh, you can stop. <laughs> okay, man. <laughs>